Hey, everybody. It's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to today's episode of Today's Best Stock Picks. It's Friday, December 4th, 2020. And today what we're looking at is a lot on the table and actually some rotation this week, too, which is pretty interesting, which is really uh, highlighting the fact that you need to be on top of your game in this market. There is uh, there's a lot of opportunity right now, provided that you're in the right stocks with order flow, which is a big deal. Um, what we have right now is apparently, even with the bipartisanship right now, uh, there is a $900 billion stimulus package that is in agreement. It's they're trying to work out the details right now. I think that's kind of why we're seeing the market just uh, float higher during the day. If you're trading any of the indices right now, it's been challenging uh, itself to be actively trading those, specifically day trading, but there's plenty of opportunities uh, in stocks right now. Waiting on the jobs numbers today um, at 8.30, uh, and the futures are up today. So there's plenty to do right now. We're actually more uh, looking at new trades that are just starting new trades, but we also have a couple that have played out really nicely. Something that we mentioned yesterday, which is just mind boggling to me, uh, especially from when I started trading um, back in 2000, is the percentage intraday moves, the one day percentage moves are just incredible. Uh, and this is such a glorious, glorious time to be a uh, active trader like we are, which is that short term cash flow window where we're looking for trades anywhere from an hour to 10 days. Uh, the moves are just crazy. We have, we have stocks doing 200%, some stocks doing 25% in one day. Uh, and this is really what capturing order flow is all about. This is what tape reading is all about. Um, if this stuff is new to you, definitely click down and learn about the boot camp. It's, it's only a $295 investment for 30 days of trading together and you get into my community. It's uh, most people risk that on one trade, uh, one losing trade, <laughs> and a lot more than that on one losing trade. You get 30 days uh, with us. And what's interesting too, it's for swing trading and day trading. That's a big, um, a big thing to make note of because when we have our 8.30 game plan meetings uh, every day, uh, most of the ideas, if not 95% of the ideas are swing trades. So even if you have a full-time job, you can get our exact entries and exits into some of these trades uh, and, and we can help manage them with you. We give suggestions on, um, here's how I would do it. Here's what I'm saying. Here's how to book the profits. Here's when you should be adding to the trades. Uh, and that's really what makes the community pretty special. So if you want to take this a little bit deeper, definitely click down and learn about the bootcamp. Um, also, if you get some value out of these videos, uh, please click the channel to subscribe. That would mean everything to me. So today we're going to start taking a look at, it seems like the bloom has been taken off of the uh, electric vehicle stocks right now, which again, really highlights the need to understand order flow, the need to understand when money's flowing into one sector, coming out of a sector. And if you're, if, if you're good at it, like we are, uh, which is your money's going to constantly be moving in the right stocks. So you get a nice month, month and a half, two months, then you get another nice month, month and a half, two months, uh, but in different sectors. So for example, this year, uh, we had the uh, solar stocks a couple of months ago, easy trades, and, and I say easy, meaning order flow is easy to recognize, the tape was easy to recognize, then they kind of like the tape changed there. And now we're actually drifting over into um, the electric vehicle stocks. And, and now they've kind of cooled off a little bit. It seems like they really needed upgrades to uh, get, get the juices going. So we had a really unbelievable day trade there on Wednesday, where we kind of bought the bottom uh, and just day traded the stock. And towards the end of the day, and again, this is those stocks talking about percentage moves in one day that are just incredible. Um, why didn't I carry them over the night? And really it comes down to the tape right now is telling us that the story has changed just a little bit. So when the story changes, when the tape changes, you're not as aggressive with looking for bigger profits. You're more kind of like a sniper getting in there and trading for cash flow. So what we're looking for in the solar stocks right now is I want to see them go well bid again, at the very least on the daily chart, which means that we're looking for higher highs and higher lows. And this is important, a strong close to confirm, to get feedback that the market is now ready to start um, holding those stocks up again. And this is a very important part of trading. Again, it doesn't matter if you're day trading or swing trading, we don't need to catch the top of the bottom. It's one of the, it's one of the oldest and biggest mistakes that traders make. Well, our job is to find the easy money uh, where it's obvious. Again, I'll say it as I do every single day. You wanna look at a chart, you wanna say, wow, the buyers are in charge of that thing and I just can't wait to find a spot to piggyback on, on what they're already doing. 
and catch the you know catch that part in the middle catch the catch the the the, the twenty percent to the ninety percent of the move. You don't need to catch zero and you don't need to catch a hundred. Um, so now we're shifting over into a couple of other stocks. The, what we're going to take a look at today is airlines, cruise lines, uh, and we might call them you know the get out of the house stocks. We're talking about every day. It's a big question. Uh, why is the market going up with the pandemic numbers just going up like crazy every day? And it really comes down to the stock market is a discounting mechanism. It's six months into the future. And the, and the market right now is buying stocks that they believe, and I say the market, the order flow, the smart money, buying stocks that they believe six months from now are going to be back into good shape. And we're seeing that with the casino stocks. Uh, wind has been one that I haven't traded in a long time, which I absolutely love to trade. And now it's starting to get attention. That's that's really the terminology you want to have in your mind. Um, you know, there's all the complicated ways of looking at the market, but really, does does the smart money have attention on what you're looking at right now? When the smart money has attention on your stocks, when the, when they're active in those stocks, when there's volatility in those stocks, um, that's when you want to be involved, especially if the order flow is obvious. So it starts out in three stages. We talk all the time about building that argument: is the order flow obvious? Can you read the tape to say, is it now time to start looking for an entry or have we missed the entry and we're too late and you just step back and wait for a better entry or have we the optimal entry sitting in front of us right now and now it's the time to get involved. So really once you understand order flow, everything else falls into place because reading the tape and the entries don't matter <laughs> unless you have actually um, really clean order flow. In other words, it's again, keep in mind, is it really obvious when you're looking at your stocks, you wanna say, is it obvious? Is it obvious that buyers are in charge of the stock right now? If the answer comes back, no, you're guessing. <laughs> That's really where the majority of trading losses come from is people hoping that a stock moves because maybe they read it somewhere or for whatever reason. And you don't need to do that. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. Now, let's, let's take that a step further. If it's obvious, how long has it been obvious? Was it just yesterday we pulled it up on a scan and exploded to the upside? That's not enough to have conviction. Is it a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, four weeks? How, how, how long has it been obvious? And here, here's, the, here's the terminology, here's the thought process. Here's the visualization that you want. You want to look and you want to say, how long is it obvious that smart money is allocating uh, to that particular stock? The longer it's obvious, there's real money committed. And again, remember what I just said before about well bid? You want to see higher highs and higher lows. If you can see higher highs and higher lows, on uh, the last two days, you got you, you got the start of something. But if you can start to see that over longer time, somebody, Mr. Market, Benjamin Graham called it, I call it the smart money. Somebody is committing capital to that to create those higher highs, to hold those higher lows. And those are the stocks that you want to be paying attention to. But remember, that's only the first part. That's only the first part is for spotting good ideas. Then you get to the next part where you start to read the tape and you put the pieces together. What are the market internals doing? What is the sector doing? What is the industry group doing? How much room does the stock to go? How far has it already gone? And that's gonna be interesting too, because we're gonna take a look at the airline stocks right now. And that's kind of the, the, the map that we just talked about with the uh, solar stocks and the electric vehicle stocks. The tape changed a little bit. So we read the tape taken, taken back. We're looking for easier trades in other industries right now, even industry groups. And then if the solar stocks pop up on our radar again and we start to see uh, smart money buying in there again, we'll, we'll, we'll jump back in there and, and we'll, we'll get our feet wet. And the more confirmation we get, the more we'll commit our capital because we're just piggybacking on the smart money. And that's where trading becomes a lot less stress-free. Uh, so we're going to hop over. We're going to take a look at the charts. I got one really interesting trade that we're going to take a look at today. Uh, the stock is LAZR, okay, Luminar Technologies. The, this company is actually founded by a 17 year old who's now 25 year old and they do the autonomous uh, technology for self-driving cars. And a lot of people are comparing him to uh, Mark Zuckerberg, believe it or not, um, which is not the worst comparison in the world to have, right? Um, so anyway, the stock has now got attention. Now the only downside to this, I wanna be very clear. What you wanna see is more of this and with consistency. Now, a lot of these companies have had these explosions from 10 to 30, 10 to 25, 10 to 40, and you look to buy the first pullback, and then that first pullback sinks all the way back down to 10, and you, you bought it up at 20, and you're like, what am I doing here? Uh, the, the reason I bring this up is because these are not expensive stocks, and a lot of people can feel like, oh, I could go in there and, and get 
if I buy 3,000 shares of this stock and it moves up to X dollars, I'm going to clean up. And But you have to work the orders. That, that The point that I want to make is that if you buy all the way up here and you don't have the right mindset, you don't respect risk, you can watch the thing drip all the way down uh, on you and you're buying the shares at the wrong time or getting building into the position at the wrong time. So these kind of stocks um, that have these explosions, they have less attention on a regular basis. You need to get feedback from the market. You need to put probes out in the market like Jesse Livermore talked about. And you add as it moves in your favor as opposed to going in with full share size uh, the very first time you're looking to buy. So now even getting in a little bit deeper here and reading the tape, the stock is a little bit overextended. So what we would be doing is we'd be looking to build a position here with lower share size on the initial entry. And then again, as it starts moving in our favor, because the tape has expanded a little bit from what the stock has normally done, uh, there is a risk that the stock is going to pull back. So we want to start to build our shares within a window. So then when the smart money steps back in and says, okay, this is the right price. Uh, we're good here. Let's start accumulating shares again. Uh, then you'll have your full position, but you did it in a smart way where it wasn't everything at once where you're losing sleep if the stock starts to pull back. So this is going to be one that's on our radar uh, going forward. Now, speaking about some of these stocks that are just having amazing, amazing intraday uh, one day opportunities, which I, I keep telling everybody in the, in the community, this is a glorious time to be an active trader. This stock yesterday, uh, which we actively traded all day, 26.45% uh, in one day, in one day. And it's actually even larger move just from the previous, um, from the previous close. So what I want to get across here is we're looking for follow through but you need to put into your mind, what is the odds of follow through from here? If I want to initiate a new swing trade, I want to initiate a trade that lasts uh, for the next 10 days. This is monstrous. This one day did more than what the stock normally does over a couple of weeks. Now, maybe there's a little bit more, but look what happened the last time the stock went parabolic like this. This is what happened over the next five days. So we're going to be actively day trading this stock. I am not going to be looking to initiate a new swing trade here until the stock pulls back a little bit. But if it meets our day trading criteria, we will be in this very actively today. CRWD, we mentioned yesterday, a lot of these stocks that have been having positive earnings have had really solid follow through that day. And then the following week after that, it's just been really good. Coles, if you want to take a look at KSS, that's the, the bigger one. Uh, that's the most recent example. So this is opening lower today. It's set to open lower, but we're looking to actively trade this again. And because 152 is the breakout level and we're getting a little bit of a pullback here, that's still a little bit of a distance away. So what I'm going to be looking to do is initiating active day trades, but do what we call trade around a core position where I'm going to day trade it intraday, but then look to start building a position a little bit longer term. Now that's an advanced topic. Not something we can discuss in this quick video or, 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 or even in, um, in a quick meeting. It's something that is kind of an experience thing that you need to understand how to do. But I want, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to be uh, outside of what you normally do. I want to challenge you by expanding the possibilities of what you think trading is. There's day trading, swing trading, position trading, trading around core positions, and then you have your longer term uh, investing, right? So there's so many things, so many different ways that we can make uh, make money in the markets. Um, that's what makes the market so amazing. That's why being an entrepreneur and being in the markets, uh, which is what stock trading is, you're, you're, you're running a trading business. Uh, it's always exciting. It's always interesting. There's always a new level that you can get to. Uh, I have to sneeze, excuse me. Moderna is going to be in the list every day, no matter what. They seem to have the best news. Pfizer actually, <coughs> excuse me, Pfizer seems to not have the same mojo that this stock does right now. This one has all of the attention on the market right now. Uh, I am not carrying these overnight. However, the intraday trades have just been really, really clean. So I'm going to continue to do that. Uh, hopefully you caught the entry in Pfizer that we had at 220 uh, last week. This was our original target here at 240, but then we expanded it uh, a little bit up to the 250 area. So hopefully if we get a punch higher today, we might even be able to get out of this because it has had some nice moves. I wouldn't mind booking a nice profit heading into the weekend. I've moved up the trailing stop on this trade. Uh, speaking of the get out of the house window, I want to give you some ideas um, both in cruise lines. So I'm going to zoom out of here so you can get a little bit better picture. Uh, these are, again, these are the trades where they're discounting it into the future. And now if you're looking for longer term positions and you can see where they came from pre-pandemic, right? We're talking about all the way up here, which is almost double right now, right? These are the positions where it's the first time they're breaking out, the first time we're getting 
quality attention because it's a push and a pause and it's staying there. Uh, now you look to build positions. Just because it's $25 doesn't mean go in and get 10,000 shares. You go in and you get however many shares you're comfortable with. And then when you get another push and a pause, you look to add more shares. So I'm going to give you a list of stocks that are in my game plan right now. Uh, Norwegian Cla uh, Cruise Line is one of them. Obviously, Carnival Corp, another one. And again, getting right up to that level, this is where we start to build a position. Uh, Royal Caribbean is another one. That one seems to be trading the strongest right now. Uh, then we work our way over into the airlines, which are pretty much doing exactly the same thing. Delta Airlines, Spirit, you can see yesterday we called this one out, uh, and United Airlines. So hopefully you're understanding that, again, we don't want to necessarily call this sector rotation as much as it's smart money rotation, uh, because smart money is not necessarily an entire sector. It's more industry group specific. Uh, so America, uh, United Airlines as well, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. Uh, excuse me, Tyson, that's TSM, TSN uh, actually traded into a nice breakout. 67.50 was the level. This is the first time it actually went well bid. So we're going to have a small piece here looking for the next level up at 77.50, which is not a monster target, but it's a pretty clean trade if it holds. Uh, six flags, again, sticking with the get out of the house uh, window. We we're looking over here. We put it in a game plan when it gapped, and now it's held basically for a couple of weeks. Uh, you can see bearish gap, bearish gap. So we've got a lot of gaps to fill. Uh, but plenty of room to go. Again, if you want to take a look at um, pre-pandemic was over here, but the ultimate goal will be looking up at 57 and change. Uh, sticking with this theme right now, finally, you can see when was in this box for uh, the better part of the year, gapped up, held the box. And, that, and that's really just basic technical analysis right there. Gapped out. And again, we drew this back in April. So that's how, that's how powerful keeping it simple is. Uh, and now we've expanded off of that. We've actually got some nice attention. Now, the problem here is that the tape has expanded a little bit. I would expect this stock to pull back. The best entry for me right now in this stock would be closer to 100 and then look for a run to um, 135 area. Starbucks, again, obviously, another one benefiting from the get out of the house genre, right? Uh, we had 92 as the level, but now it's hovering at 100. This year, uh, this this move here, we, we traded this pullback and bounce. We we're looking for 92. It didn't quite get there, but then it exploded through there. So again, the vaccine news is discounting into the future. These companies that are obviously get out of the house. Uh, Nike fits that criteria as well. Uh, you can see Nike actually punched through the new all-time highs yesterday. So we're going to be looking to initiate a new swing trade there too. Uh, and last but not least, a strong stock with a weak close. Uh, Cardiff Oncology, CRDF. This is one of my all-time favorite setups. Uh, of course, you want to trade stocks moving in your favor, but when you get a strong stock that pulls back, closes on the lows, uh, this is one of those trades where we're looking to bid yesterday's low uh, as support, looking for a nice lower risk, easy to manage risk entry at yesterday's low. So there's a lot to unpack today. If you have time, watch the whole video. We, um, we, we get a little bit of a lesson, a little bit of rotation. Uh, a little talk about tape order flow, tape reading, and um, optimal entries. Uh, now it's up to you. Now you got to make your game plan. One of the biggest things I, I want to get across, we talk about a lot of stuff, uh, and there's, there's, there's limitless possibilities of what you could be trading. But what you need to do is focus. Trying to trade everything will, will have you overwhelmed. It will have you um, confused. It will have you uh, hesitating. Take the ideas and then mold them into what matches your risk tolerance, what matches your personal goals. It's one of the biggest challenges for new people coming into the community um, is they really don't have goals. They just know that they want to trade. So once we really start to refine what it means uh, to trade for you, it's almost it's almost it's kind of like what kind of cash flow do you want to make? What kind of profits do you want? Do you want day trading profits, swing trading profits or monthly profits? And then the goals have to come from that. Charlie in our community this morning had asked about a little bit longer term trading uh, from, from the swing trading and how do we apply order flow and tape reading to the longer term. So Charlie's pulling out of himself like I, I have a little bit different goals than I thought and how do I accomplish that? And that's really the best part of being in the community that you have those questions and we go and answer them right away. And then we start to apply them right away, which is really exciting. So anyway, have a great Friday. Be safe this weekend. Have a great weekend. Uh, let's have a great finish to uh, what's been a pretty good week of trading. Have a great day, everyone.